Hey everybody, so I have an update for my ECM Synchronica. After roughly four and a half years of use, I had to make a major repair to it. And what I had to do was replace my brew boiler. Ultimately, I had to replace a few of the parts um, associated with that. One was the, the gasket. And upon further inspection, I had to replace something else, uh, which is what this is involved for, a little T-barb connector here. I'll go over that in a little minute. But what happened with my brew boiler here is uh, end up being a defective weld. And you can see in the sides here is a lot of rust. Uh, water was leaking through the welds and coming out of the boiler. It completely disintegrated the insulation on this side of the boiler. Here's a picture of above the brew boiler with the machine open. And you can see where what happened to the insulation is just not there, it just disintegrated. And you can also see some evidence of possible leaking out of some of the other <clears throat> connections and plumbing that might happen over time, whatever. But the majority of the problem was coming out of the sides of the welds here. And uh, here's a picture of the inside highlighting some of the contaminant uh, from the welding process, which apparently rusted, uh, corroded, rusted through, and then caused a leak out the side of the boiler. Uh, one sign that something was wrong uh, before I found a puddle of water underneath the machine one day was as I actuated the brew lever here, it took like a couple of extra seconds for water to come out of the, brew, the group head. You can kind of hear the pump like trying to prime water again, like it was trying to get water to go back into the, the boiler and then come out of the group head. It took like two or three seconds for it to come out. I was like, what the heck? But after it filled up again, and I would activate the, le the lever, the water would come out just fine. But if it sat for any length of time, probably after a couple of hours, the leak would then continue, the water level would drop, and then boom, the issue again with water coming out of the, the group head, not immediately, after like two or three seconds of waiting. It was strange. So if you're having an issue with water not coming out of the group head I'd say roughly immediately uh, there there probably that is a probably a sign that there is a leak or a slow leak happening in your brew boiler especially if it sits for a while and it then does it uh, once you once it fills the leak isn't fast enough to cause the issue again so it'll probably come out immediately then like mine so one thing uh, to note I did work with Holate Love I did purchase the machine from Holate Love and working with their support technicians uh, over the phone and through email, sending them pictures back and forth. As you saw the inside of the boiler once already, you could see that I don't have any scale buildup. And that was after four years of use. So I'll go over what my water filtration system is in a little, in a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with that said, I want to um, point out that how much did it cost to replace this, uh, this part? So just a brew boiler alone... Uh, retails for roughly two hundred dollars so my first reaction to that was wow that's not as much as I thought it was going to be I, th I thought the boiler was going I thought these boilers going to be far more expensive than that since they're stainless you know and they are built pretty well I mean on this side the wheels are like you know they're, they're like perfect unfortunately with the contaminant it rusted through and caused this issue for me so whole lot and my machine was out of warranty um, since working with them and they can see that they didn't have any scale build up and that there was an actual issue with the boiler they did work with me on, on the replacement cost for this so it wasn't too bad so overall all the parts I did replace so replacing the insulation uh, I, have, I had to get new uh, gasket I'll go over this in a second Ugh. and I did get uh, a brass T-barb now what this replaced real quick Above the machine here, just behind here, is where that connector is located. So you have a silicone tube coming out of the uh, steam boiler. Another tube coming out of the back of the brew boiler. Goes into that connector. Drains out the bottom. Here's a picture of that of the inside of the machine highlighting that, that, that part. Or lack thereof now. Because after time, the original one is plastic. And I guess with the heat of the steam boiler being quite high, over time, that plastic basically disintegrated so it got Thanos snapped out of existence and as soon as I so I 
first open the machine, you can see that part is there. There's a picture of kind of showing that. I'll highlight it. And as soon as I touched it, it just went, poof, it just turned into dust. I was like, ugh. So I was like, all right, I called them back up. Add this to the part of things to send me, please. And unfortunately, they were out of stock. So they said, well, what can I do? She said, well, <clears throat> see if you can find maybe a brass replacement. And what you need to replace that, if, you, if you're in the three to four year mark like I am, chances are that part may have already started to fail on you because the stock one is plastic. So this is a quarter inch barbed T connector uh, for water, obviously. And this is brass. Now this particular one I'm holding is not lid free. I could probably use this safely in the machine, but I was like, ah, I decided not to do it. Uh, this with these weren't expensive i think they're like seven dollars so i can always use it for something else someday who knows so i did find one at a local plumbing supply uh place near me that did have lead free one and it was rated for a certain temperature and all that stuff so i did put that one in the machine uh to replace it and i should no longer have any issues and apparently because mine was in such poor shape the plastic one i was probably having a leak in that location as well and one indication of that is under the drip tray here, you have the switches. And what I found, and you can see, there's some water damage there of dried water. <clears throat> that was wet. There was some water dripping out from the front. So there's a sign that if you're having an issue with that T-connector connecting those silicone hoses, uh, look in that spot. If you do see some water there, chances are you're leaking out of this T connector and getting a brass one you never have to replace it again but when you do be careful because it does disintegrate so go back to the brew boiler for a second uh, this is the old version so according to the German manual February 2019 I believe is the date uh, they mentioned on there they did update this part and they, they basically included an additional hole here the same size thread uh, in this location so what they did Here's a picture of the connections of the bottom of the brew boiler. So you can see the heating element in the middle, uh, the plumbing pipe that goes to the brew head, and a blind plug. The additional hole is for a new drain plug. So it's like a little uh, 90 degree elbow fastener with like a blind plug on the end or some kind of valve. Uh, I don't have that in my machine. I don't have a picture of it, unfortunately. But uh, Unfortunately, I didn't have that part when I replaced my boiler, so I have two blind plugs in the bottom. Uh, one here, I just saw in the picture what it looked like, and it has the other one. What that blind plug actually looks like is the drain plug underneath in the drip tray. So it's basically that part on the bottom of the brew boiler. It's the same thing. So I have two uh, of those here underneath the new part. So that was up, actually updated in the machine. And the other update um, that did occur, I believe, in 2017 uh, for the new versions of the machine, uh, underneath the drip tray, here we go, back again. I have the old version of it, and I don't have a space for the blind basket or a steam tip hole or an extra steam tip for the wand. The new chassis, uh, the new versions of the machines have that built into the chassis. Mine does not have that. Not really a big deal. The other thing was they upgraded the PID in that in that time, and you know, <clears throat> a couple years ago someone mentioned if I machine to upgrade this. While I had the machine apart, I did went, go ahead and upgrade my PID to the new version. So now I get the two two bar steam pressure, which also came with the pressure release valve rated to two and a half bar for safety. So back to the brew boiler here. So that yeah, so that <clears throat> so that was one of the updated part. So. This is the old version. The new one has a third hole for a drain plug. Why is that? Um, draining the brew boiler in this configuration, my version of the machine, I have to remove the mushroom cap here, take it out, cause the machine off and cool down. I then have to take it to the sink, tip it over, and let the water drain out the top of the brew group head. And I was like, ugh. Not the bit, it's not the most difficult process to do, but it's not... It's not the easiest either because you have to deal with the weight of the machine, not to not to drop it, and so on. Anyway, it's a hassle. So now with the updated part, they made that easier to now drain the brew boiler if you need to service it. For the gasket, 
Uh, here's a picture of the old gasket next to the new one. The new one is now green. The original one was gray. And besides the color, the difference I would say is the green one is a little firmer in its texture. It's uh, not The gray one was actually softer. So they may have changed that. I don't have any official word on that, any of well, why that is. But the only thing I can think of is maybe with the, a little harder material, it creates a better seal that would ha probably last longer over time, I, I assume. But what happened to this one? Well, one thing to note, if you do have to take your heating element out, and here's a picture of mine after four years of use with no scale buildup, and Holate Love was actually quite surprised at the condition of my heating element after four years of use. Uh, like I said, I'll go over my water filtration in a second. The, the gasket goes over the top, fits in that little cup area at the bottom, and then you put it upside down into the boiler here. The trick to this is as you rotate around, tightening up the nuts again, do very minimal turns as you rotate. Yeah, it's a pain, it takes longer to do, but it gives you it will give you the best results and that's basically what I screwed up here with mine so when you do this if you do have to replace this do like one turn at a time as you rotate take the wrench turn 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 keep doing that until it gets down and then keep doing that as you tighten it minimal amount of turn as you rotate I was probably did too many turns at uh, each uh, on each nut before I rotated and Apparently it popped the gasket out a little bit, pushed it up against the threads of one of the bolts, and as I tightened this one down pretty tight, it then ripped it. And you see some evidence here of the threads uh, getting pressed up against the, the gasket here, and as I tightened it, it then tore it. Of course, I get it all back together, put it back in the machine, and then turn it on, and then pfft, it's puking water out the bottom again. I'm like, ugh. So I take it apart, I found that I ripped the gasket, order another one, wait for that to come in, put it back together, I made sure I took my time, was very careful, I did put some Dow 111 grease on here, food grade grease, that helps make a bit of seal, and if it does move around, it, 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 won't, it won't rub so hard, or have but friction, it'll move around easier. Anyway, so <clears throat> I had to do all that again, put it back together, and since then, it's been fine since. So uh, one other thing I want to do mention is I did also replace the little filter underneath the reservoir. There's a, a filter that comes out of the reservoir and then goes into the rotary pump. It's like a little small fish tank filter that did have some muck inside the little screen. So I was like, while everything was apart, it was like $10 or whatever it was. I had ordered, send them, had me send, I had them send me a new one. And I, unfortunately, I don't have that part any further. I did. I think I did throw it out. But for the most part, uh, those are the things I have to deal with 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 my machine uh, after four and a half years. And I now I am approaching five years now, and I probably will have to go through my group head. Uh, I don't have any problems with it leaking or anything right now. But after you know, but hitting the five year mark, it might be a good thing to do. To prevent any issues, so I'll probably replace. There's some seals here in the lever, in the lever, some seals here in the pressure release uh, valve section there. So I'll probably dismantle this and rebuild a lot of this, re uh, replace the seals and stuff like that. Clean up the cam. I've taken it apart once when I had to take the machine apart, and let, thankfully I had very minimal scale buildup in the head. So my so my machine is really in good shape after four years. So water filtration, I have a, an entire house water filtration system. I, I live where I live, I'm on a well. I have high iron and magnes in my water that I filter out. I do have a water softener as part of that to remove any of the leftover hardness that I have in my water. My water isn't really that hard, but whatever hardness is left, I remove. And that really is the most important thing is removing the hardness of your water to make sure your water is somewhat soft. That's what causes the scale buildup in these machines. And from that water filtration system, I then go into reverse osmosis. And a lot of people will say not to use reverse osmosis water, but I still have enough trace minerals left in my water, some magnesium and such, uh, that allow, apparently as a sensor in the machine, 
that if there's enough minerals in the uh, in the water, the machine will detect that it is full. Uh, I couldn't find a, such sensor in the machine, but some sen some machines apparently do have that. I have that problem. So I have used the uh, reverse osmosis water for four years to fill that tank. And thankfully, as you can see, I have no scale buildup. So I'm going to continue that. Uh, my machine works fine. What to, the coffee tastes fine with the water that I'm using. I'm going to continue using that. So there's something that's very important to do. If you have a machine like this, make sure you really are filtering the water. Water scale buildup, water damage is what will really destroy these machines. So just be careful with that. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. This is my update on what I've had to do with my machine uh, repair-wise. One thing I will leave before I leave is I did do some upgrades. I, I did mention I did upgrade the PID. I did uh, replace the gasket here. The rubber one did break uh, over time. It cracked, leaked. I put a new silicone one here. I did upgrade the shower screen. And one last teaser, I now uh, also have a Chiaro E5 single dosing grinder. Uh, I'll make another video about all this junk later. But uh, that's just a little teaser of all the things that I've done to the machine, as well as a four-hole four team, steam tip. So I'll go over all that later. So thanks for watching. This is my little update on my Sacronica. Hopefully you're enjoying yours. Uh, issue free. Enjoy your coffee. Have a good one.